And welcome back. And we are moving into our first conversation this morning with a panel from the Ministry of Health as we find out more about the pink eye outbreak. We have with us Dr. Russell Mantanero, who's an epidemiologist with the Ministry of Health. We have Lerna Perez, who is a surveillance officer. And we have Dr. Ethan Goff, who is also an epidemiologist with the Ministry of Health. Good morning and welcome and thank you for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. So, I can say two things. One, uh, we can't talk about pink eye without feeling a little bit itchy in your eyes, right? So we can anticipate that's going to happen. Um, but it's very interesting that it has become such a large issue. Uh, one of the things we know is when school comes back or starts back, you usually see pink eye among the kids. Some of these illnesses are common. But my question to you is, how did it reach this point where we have so many people infected? What do we know so far? So it's actually hard to say um, how it got to this point. Um, we, we know that many countries in the region are experiencing large outbreaks of pink eye, just like we are. Mm -hmm. um, from our information that we have uh, regionally, Mm -hmm. It seems that there is some viral uh, conjunctivitis that's making its way through the region. It seems that way. Um, and now it's here. Mm -hmm. And so we are experiencing the large outbreak of conjunctivitis that other countries have seen mm -hmm. since maybe the middle of this year. Okay. Um, I think most recently there was an outbreak um, in the Mexican state of Quintana Roo. Um, and soon after they reported their outbreak, we saw an increase in our cases here in Belize, predominantly starting in the Corozal and Orange Rock districts. So it trickled down? We think, yes. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the characteristics of conjunctivitis? Because for a lot of people, they don't see it as something that they consider um, something that's a viral, you know, like dengue or, you know, Zika. So tell us a little bit about what makes it a viral, a disease that can go viral. Yeah, well, for, to start with, um, conjunctivitis or pink eye is, is uh, there can be many causes. Yeah. Uh, there is, as you mentioned, the viral, uh, there is bacterial, and there are others, for example, for, uh, in regards to allergens. Uh, whenever you talk about outbreaks in, in communities, what you're looking at is basically bacterial or viral uh, contagion. Mm -hmm. What you're looking at probably that, uh, as Dr. Goff had mentioned, is that in the region we've been seeing an outbreak of viral cases. Uh, we have been swabbing from the Ministry of Health. Uh, we're taking swabs for both bacterial and viral. Uh, to date, uh, I believe the, neg uh, the bacterial swabs have all been returning almost negative. And the presentation that you have of what, how it seems to appear, it, it more than likely is something viral. Mm -hmm. uh, it's highly still contagious. Both are still highly contagious. Um, you, you feel that itchy burning eyes. You feel like um, what people say, sand in your eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the redness, of course, red or pink, and then you start having an inflammation with the eyelids, so you start seeing a swelling there. Uh, sensitivity to light, uh, there can be pain in the eyes. Uh, both presentations are the same, bacterial and viral. Uh, the, the way how it transmits basically is, as we all know, by hand. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why we need to have some proper hygiene there with measures with your hands, hand washing, all of that. So uh, as you had mentioned earlier, that the, the cases with, with schools and all of that, that is where we're seeing the, the, the numbers increase, yeah. where there, there are so many children, yeah. school children that are being affected. So mm -hmm. more than likely what we're seeing is viral. So we have sent out for confirmation to see what exactly it is. Mm -hmm. But as far as we know in the region, as Dr. Goff has mentioned, it is something viral from there. And we, we believe it's pretty much the same as well here. What areas are uh, most affected currently? Countrywide. Countrywide. It started north and Belize City, right? Um, yeah, North Belize City, Orange Walk, Cayo. Mm -hmm. San um, Pedro. San Pedro, yeah. Mm -hmm. San Pedro was one of the hotspots initially. Um, but now we're seeing an increase in cases countrywide. Mm -hmm. um, the district with the or the districts with the highest rate of infection are still uh, Corozal and. Mm -hmm. um, Belize, but mm -hmm. um, we're seeing it everywhere. Um, the past week, we are beginning to also see an increase in cases in Stan Creek and Toledo because those were the districts that were sort of lagging behind, so to speak. We weren't seeing much activity mm -hmm. there, but we are seeing it now. 
-hmm. So at this point, it's, it's countrywide, mm -hmm. I would say. How many cases do we have confirmed so far, estimated? Um, so we've had about 4,200 and something reported cases mm -hmm. for the period starting from the 10th of September up until yesterday. Um, and I start tallying the numbers from the 10th of September because that's the week when we saw the initial increase in cases mm -hmm. um, in Corzal and Joao, Cayo and Belize, mm -hmm. or San Pedro specifically. Mm -hmm. And normally when mm -hmm. it comes, oh sorry, go ahead. So, and I just want to uh, mention here that what uh, Dr. Goff is mentioning are the reported cases. Right. Cases that we have information on and uh, because of the once it comes into a family, for example, yeah. everybody gets affected right. uh, mm -hmm. most of the time. So you might report one in that family, but mm -hmm. um, we don't. Uh, you can imagine the extent yeah. mm -hmm. of how many people are. If really I affected. get it in my house, maybe the rest of the house won't go to the doctor. They'll yes. just use yeah. my drops. And I was telling Marlene that I don't think I've had pink eye since I was a kid. Do you think that there's any kind of correlation between the school st starting back and then this outbreak since it's September? I think the, it maybe more had to do with the um, septem September celebrations more so than the okay. schools. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we do know, like Marlene mentioned and Dr. Manzanero mentioned, that um, we tend to see cases of pink eye and uh, outbreaks in schools yeah. when schools reopen. But with in this particular case, the majority of cases that have been reported are actually adults, adults. or oh, okay. they're not. Um, they're older than school age. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, although the schools are playing a role mm -hmm. in this, this outbreak, and we are, um, we have advised schools that if students are sick, sick with pink eye, they should stay home. We're also advising the same for working adults, adults because the bulk well. of the cases that have been reported during that time period are actually the adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's let's understand uh, why it is spreading so rapidly. I think it's key for people to know that. Um, it is a very contagious disease, right? Uh, and you said hands, but explain to us how you have pink eye and I develop it. Uh, well, pretty much, it's, it's uh, when, it, when you're talking, well, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the viral and yeah. the bacterial. Like the, those are the most contagious. Um, it basically, when, whenever you start with that and you, and you have that, you, you have your incubation period. That means that the time it takes to actually Different. transmit and actually infect someone else. Yeah. Uh, for example, the viral can be from a couple of hours to, to a couple of days and then after that you can develop it and it can stay as long as up to 14 days. So oh. up to two weeks you're still wow. being able to transmit that virus. Um, basically it has to do with a lot of hand to face. So whenever someone is infected you can actually <laughs> touch your face or touch your eyes and then that's, that's the mode of transmission. But we're also noticing as well that the bacterial and viral cases, many of the times, it's in the the moles and the the, 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 the mouth. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're coughing and droplets come out, and it's it's actually transmitting like that because it can spread in droplets. Mm -hmm. So in a, anybody around you as well like that can get affected, and that's the reason why probably when you're in such close proximity to certain individuals, you can you're at a higher risk mm -hmm. to develop it. So you're saying if you have pink eye and you cough in the open air. If you're infected, yeah. there is a yeah. possibility that you can transmit it that okay. way. But the most common transmission is perhaps the, the germs from yes, your own eyes. You are directly touching yeah. it and then you touch certain surfaces. You touch so that's, the that's table the and I yes. touch the same table, then I touch my then eyes. Someone else comes and can transmit it that way too. So when you think about actually the movement of people, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know how much commuters we have uh, and the quickest way for disease to move from point A to point B is through movement of people yeah. and then people yeah. that travel in a bus that is yeah. you know crowded mm -hmm. um, you have to hold on yeah. to yeah. places and uh, I mean it's and then it's you wipe virus. off the sweat off your face and then you're sweating yeah. and then you know people have a tendency for walk around with rags you know so they have their little rag and it's hot yeah. and they wipe the face walking with the children next to them yeah. and um, the children might you might yeah. wipe, wipe their face also with the same rag yeah. you leave it you set it down you somewhere it you go to the clinic and you set it down there so the next person comes in and sits so it's it, the transmissibility of it is is I mean it's so contagious that yeah. um, little things like that that sometimes you take for granted that nothing is happening there is an active transmission of the virus in your day-to-day -day things that you're doing preparing food, uh, taking care of your children, 
mm -hmm. um, going on the bus, as I said, going to the market, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. change of money. Yes. Yeah. Um, Once you're going into a crowded area. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is the period of contagion? Well, if I can just add one yeah, quick right. thing, Marlene, um, with respect to how contagious it is, we've estimated that in our outbreak that we're having right now, <clears throat> that up to three to four um, mm -hmm. people can be infected by one person with pink eye per day. So wow. that kind of puts things into perspective. Um, yeah. And that's part of the reason we're seeing this big explosion in, in mm. cases. It's very contagious. But um, from what point? From I start to have symptoms in my eyes for three days, for the 14 days, how long am I contagious? Uh, basically, whenever you start with, with, with the, the symptoms, uh, you, you practically become, uh, be able to transmit and infect someone else after the third day. In hours, for example, for viral, bacterial can be up to the third day. And both can actually last up to two weeks. Mm. So during that entire time, you are able to transmit. Uh, the only difference with the bacterial one is that probably when you're starting with antibiotic use, yeah. then the transmissibility and the, the, the mode of transmission there is lessened. Mm -hmm. But the viral one still remains highly contagious. Can I ask, why is it that it appears to be more aggressive in other people, than, in some people than other people? Uh, well, basically, we haven't seen uh, that. that. Uh, it, it seems as though it's, it's, it's more in, in families or in kids, but to say in, to a specific group, uh, mm -hmm. we, we haven't seen that. It's mm -hmm. basically generalist. Uh, no, I think what she was referring the to, like, in the, the, the symptoms, the symptoms severe uh, like, in how severe. Right, because, for instance, mm -hmm. my mom had slight, instance, slight symptoms. Like, she had a little bit of pinkness, and it was gone within, like, two, three days. And then I have mm -hmm. a coworker who has it, and she's out for the week. Yeah. Why is there why is there a differentiation yeah. in, in the aggression? The severity. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it all depends. Uh, we, we can't actually say. I mean, in families, for example, some of them will get it very, very much uh, pretty bad, yeah. mm -hmm. while some of them get it not that bad. So it, it all depends on, on the, I believe, the virus and the bacteria. It's, it's yeah. not yeah. solely on, unless you probably have some kind of uh, immunocompromise. You have your immune system weakened or you have right. some other comorbidity, some other yeah. disease that is affecting you. Then chances are that it might affect you even more. Yeah. Now, this is in an era where we have been seeing uh, new diseases come into uh, our region where we perhaps are facing uh, new circumstances when it comes to health, health issues. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the unique ones. We have an outbreak of pink eye, perhaps more controllable. But what is the Ministry of Health learning from this experience about how to handle outbreaks, about transmission rates with people, um, and, and some of the practical uh, uh, actions you've had to take during the pink eye outbreak? So um, I think every outbreak sort of presents its own unique challenges. Mm -hmm. um, no two outbreaks are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. For example, if this were a pink eye outbreak that was limited to a few schools that would be a lot easier to manage yes. than what we're dealing with right now. Um, we're focusing a lot on health education and mm -hmm. Nurse Pierce, if you want to step in yeah. with what we've been doing with that. Yeah, yeah when, when it comes to interventions, you're really looking at prevention, mm -hmm. looking at some preventive actions that can be taken to minimize the spread. Um, mm -hmm. The human factor, as Dr. Gauff mentioned, the challenges is really the human factor, the human element there. That So even though there's a lot of information going out, mm -hmm. people are being given days off to stay home to, to try and contain the disease. Yeah. But uh, some people take it as an opportunity. To, okay, I'm off from work. I can go visit my friends, go right. shopping, go mm -hmm. do things. So um, it... But what we are doing, as I said, um, looking at the health education part, uh, going at the community level. So the Ministry of Health has uh, their health educators that extends to the community health workers uh, at every community. So what they are doing, they are visiting schools, uh, emphasizing the hand washing, proper mm -hmm. hand washing techniques, um, teaching teachers how to sanitize, you know, their desks because a lot of the schools that are that have a close problem a particular classroom is not because of the students most of the time it's a teacher mm -hmm. so the teachers are being affected and then you have a classroom full of children with yeah. no supervision so 
I think some, some schools have had to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, education is key. Um, when, you co when you look at the messages that are, are going out, um, trying to take advantage of whatever opportunity to get the message out yeah. is one of the things that the ministry has been doing. So uh, hand washing, sanitizing at the health facilities, what we have been doing is kind of separating yes. the persons with the, um, with the infection yeah. from the rest of the population. So I'm yeah. trying to get them out as soon as possible. Yeah. So in some places, um, for example, Belmopan and, and Cleopatra White, they have placed a tent. They have placed um, an outdoor uh, tent, yeah. Yes, you know, so that the persons there and then they have assigned the physician that will yeah. look at, so just to get them out as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, and the same thing has happened, um, for example, in the north, in Orange Walk, they have a big waiting area, so they have moved, they have separated yeah. the persons who, that are presenting with conjunctivitis, and they have assigned a physician that actually yeah. tends to them. And, and as I said, just to get them as soon as possible out of the, the big area. Yeah. Um, so it's almost like a quarantine-like approach? I, at the facility level. Yeah. And of course, there are some standard protocols in infection prevention and control at the facility. For example, disinfecting every two hours um, from the doorknobs down to surfaces, um, ensuring we have hand sanitizers around, yeah. soap in the bathrooms. Uh, so trying as best as possible, as I said, to minimize within the health facilities. Yeah. Um, when you look at the community outreach, the uh, community health workers are going to homes, um, reporting to us uh, cases that they are seeing, uh, there are our eyes out there, and also doing their health education at the, at the home. Mm -hmm. And the messages, as I said, they have done their own health education within the yeah. communities, the schools. Uh, so it's an ongoing thing. I mean, uh, that is the only thing we have right now is educate the people so yeah. as to minimize the infection as as soon as possible because um, the outbreak as I said it's we are seeing it moving mm -hmm. advancing to other areas where we did not have it so it's just trying to minimize it as much as possible if I can add to Marlene um, in terms of what the ministry has learned I mean we had um, I think the last outbreaks we've had of this magnitude have been perhaps H1N1 mm -hmm. back in 2009-2010 and um, big outbreaks of dengue mm -hmm. and like I said each outbreak presents its own challenges something like dengue we can actively intervene as the Ministry of Health by getting the vector control personnel out there and doing the spraying we can't do any spraying or anything any intervention like that for conjunctivitis um, so all we really have to fall back on is the um, health education and ensuring that hospitals don't become breeding grounds for transmission when people go to see a clinician to get diagnosed. Yeah, if I'm pregnant and I go for a checkup, I right. don't want to be at risk for uh, pink eye at the mm -hmm. clinic, um, but I also need to ensure I get my checkup as well. So right. that's, that's, I understand mm -hmm. obviously having a different area arranged for, uh, for persons with sus who suspect they have pink eye. Yeah, what, what I was leading up to mm -hmm. as well is that um, there is some, an element of public responsibility here mm -hmm. in that we've been advising and asking the public um, if you have been diagnosed with pink eye, stay away from public places, stay at home because you're putting other people at risk. Mm -hmm. And we need to also point out and emphasize that you can get this more than once. Yeah. So if you get pink eye once and you recover, you're not necessarily in the clear. As long as there are people out there who still have pink eye and they're out exposing other people, you're still at risk. Mm. So we need the public to, to buy in and understand the need to. Yeah. yeah, because I feel like there's a gap missing. And you, men and you mentioned it, Ms. Ms. Paris, because people think that they could still live their life just as normal because oh it's just pink eye it'll go in, within a week or two but i feel like there's a, a, a there's something missing that people aren't registering because there is a societal impact there is decreased productivity in workplaces because sure. there's not as much people there to to do the work there's decreased productivity in classrooms because the students are missing out so they don't get the information so what are some of the things some of the messages that your your um outreach officers uh 
portray to the public that really can drive home the importance of taking it seriously. Yes, it's just pink eye, your eye goes pink, it itches, it hurts for two, three weeks, a week or two and it goes. But what's the deeper message that people aren't registering, that aren't registering with the, with the general public? Um, well, I probably people do not think, as you mentioned, the impact it has uh, on productivity, income-wise. Yeah. I mean, if you have no to, your children will be sent back from school because they are presenting with pink eye, and you have to go to work. Yeah. You have to find a babysitter to right. look after that, um, yeah. some a caretaker for your child. Um, if you do not go, I mean, if you have a, if Channel 5, if everybody here were to come down with pink eye, or 50% or <laughs> of your staff would come down with True. pink eye, Zero then you cases can, so far. Then yeah. you can imagine <laughs> the, the impact it has on, on just the day-to-day -day function of a yeah. workplace. Yeah. Um, when you find, uh, for example, within our hospitals, yeah. because the, the constant flow of um, patients coming in, at mm -hmm. some point, some of our staff, I mean, it's, it's well, kind of uh, difficult with all the measures that are being in place. Some of our staff are, are still coming down with, with yeah. the infection, and then when you think, a number of staff we are already experiencing shortage of staff and then you have this impact then you can see how how that affects when you look at um, as I said the general population I spoke to a lady the other day and she was telling me she said but I have to come out and work mm -hmm. you know I have to work um, so they are just selling at the market please mm -hmm. um, yes it's it's very difficult for people to to disassociate themselves yeah. from the impact of what you yeah. know it has on them and yeah. on on the people that are affected. Yeah. So um, I think the I suppose people understand it when they look at money, mm -hmm. the money part, the impact, mm -hmm. and then when you I, I'm not sure how much social security will be confronting with all the um, sick days, <laughs> days that, that, yes. that, you know, the amount of population, yeah. the workforce that are actually not at work because yeah. of um, conjunctivitis. So um, it is, it, it has a major cost yeah. and there's a big cost. That is a national impact. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think even one of the points Jamie pointed out was the children out of school. Yeah. Um, you know, whether or not they'll be able to catch up, whether the whole class is out or just <coughs> what a couple of mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. Essentially, I hear from you all, this is, this is an outbreak. It is a highly contagious disease. It's not fatal, but it does have an impact. Mm -hmm. And what you really need to do is, you, you can't get in and give vaccines, you can't get in and kill the mosquitoes. You have to convince people to do what they need to do to protect themselves and protect yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. So, we said first of all, the issue starts with good hygiene, right? And sanitation, um, washing our hands. It's amazing to think how, how little you wash your hands or how little people wash their hands. Um, and it still seems to be a message that we have to talk about even when there are flu outbreaks or uh, stomach bugs that, that are going around. So what are the key messages here that we need to tell people that they need to take responsibility for? So we start with? No, I, I believe like you're all mentioning here, it's, it's a public responsibility. Yeah. yeah. So uh, definitely if you are aware that you are, for example, infected, you need to take measures that, to protect others as well. Yes. So the use of the rags and everything, you need to limit those to only yourself, keep your hands clean. If you're mm -hmm. touching your eyes and you're already infected, then you need to be very aware of keeping your hands clean before you do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, employers need to be very cognizant of how they have their employees if they are already infected the impact that it can cause with more infections. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was at a supermarket and we're seeing, uh, I'm seeing uh, individuals in the supermarket with, with pink eye and they're still there. So that needs to be, you mm -hmm. need to be very aware of these things. Yeah. So you need to take care of, your, of yourself, uh, the hand washing, uh, if you're using towels, the linens, the pillowcase, everything needs to be wiped down clean. You need okay. to, to, to sterilize those. Um, if you're at school and you know that you are already infected, keep the, the children from school and don't let them go, uh, employees as well. Uh, so there are different things that you can do. What I need to do to say though is that we've been getting constant calls or by emails of the use of eye drops. 
And as I can say, uh, it is something that we should be very aware of when we talk about the use of eye drops because it is not, we're, we're not seeing bacterial cases. So even if you're going into the pharmacy or, or you're being, being prescribed an, uh, an eye drop that has in an antibiotic, it basically won't do anything. So you can use the entire bottle and it still will has to run its course. The viral infection is just like any other viral that has to run its course. So you need to be very aware that there is no, anti there is no eye drop that can get that process speed up. What they have is the artificial tears that can actually relieve the redness, the inflammation of your eyes, but there isn't anything that you can get to actually minimize or lessen the, the yeah. infection. So people need to be very aware of that aspect. And if you are using your eye drops as well, you should have it for yourself and not, being sh not sharing that eye drop as well because there is the possibility of cross-contamination as well. So all those things need to be very, you need to be very aware of all of those measures. So. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad you, you moved into that because yeah. that's part of what we need to discuss, obviously. Uh, treatments uh, that are available. We see doctors prescribing eye drops to persons, um, but that's a key point. If you haven't identified if it's bacterial or viral, and I don't know if you can do that by a clinical assessment, um, how do you know if you should be using eye drops or not? The medicated eye drops, that is. Yeah, uh, I, the presentation for each uh, probably is, is quite similar, but then when you look at bacterial infections, it tends to have a different presentation. Okay. For example, the viral is prob probably a little bit uh, redness and there's a little bit more watery discharge, yeah. as opposed to when it's a bacterial infection where you have a pus-like discharge, it's very yeah. thick, so you can see it. The, clinically, okay. you can say, okay, it might be this or that. However, as we had mentioned earlier, the testing we've been doing here at the lab, for example, for bacterial cultures is turning up negatives. Mm -hmm. So from those cases, we're believing that this is more viral. Okay. So the use of the antibiotics uh, in, in these cases won't do anything. Can much. you debunk the mis misconceptions about what work the, the fish <laughs> medicine? Because I've heard people put pee in their eyes. Can, is, is, is that, does that work? Or, or that no? is very common in Belize, we hear that. So. Yeah, I, I believe the myths that, that are behind all of that, the use of, uh, of, of pee or, or breast milk or things to clean out the eyes, no, you shouldn't do it because you can actually cause a cross-contamination with something else. So it might actually worsen the situation. <laughs> please so stop no. putting pee in your eyes, please. <laughs> and breast milk. And breast milk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think the concept is this, this sterile things. Yeah. But I mean, just use, just wash your face with mm -hmm. water. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if your eyes are, are, are hurt, your eyes are hurting, mm -hmm. the coolness of the water eases some of that um, discomfort without having yeah. that big cast to it or that worsening of the situation. Yeah. So um, in, in going ahead with, with the messages, as I, um, please, if you're giving a day off, it's for you to stay home yeah. yes. and let this uh, virus run its course yeah. and spread it. So use it for that it's it's not holidays so it's mm -hmm. just stay home and as i said don't go to child, the supermarket and touch everything yeah. yes um and again with employers i know as i said that the impact on on the i mean when you think about the productivity mm -hmm. there is a big impact and so yeah. sometimes employers are reluctant to give the time off to the workers mm -hmm. because they might not have it too bad or anything like that but it's necessary for, for your, if your employees are presenting yeah. with pink eye, you know, and they need to go home, they need yeah. to go home. Um, we saw cases where they had cashiers, I mean, with pink eye yeah. um, working and, and you know, that, that handling of money. And so these are things that um, we want to emphasize with children, just supervise your children, make sure they wash their hands. Remind them, yeah. um, you Not know, to share utensils yes, either. Uh, and, and children are children, they tend to touch a lot, they play a lot together, so you can see how the contamination yeah. actually happens. So, but as the adult, um, we just have to be more um, conscious of yeah. these things and, and just do your best to try to minimize the contamination of surfaces, of utensils, of um, linens, as we said, how? clean. Yeah. Make sure your, your towels, everybody has their own towels, their own rugs. 
uh, yeah. so as to avoid that um, level of contamination. One of the areas a lot of people don't think about is the bathroom towel. Mm -hmm. When uh, some people keep towels in their bathroom and mm -hmm. it's shared. Um, so I, I always think of all the germs that must mm -hmm. be on it, but that's on a personal level. <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the, other, the other point I wanted to get at was looking at, uh, you know, it, it's an infection of, of the eye, right? Um, so what are some of the things people can do? And I'm glad you got into that with the, with the coolness <laughs> of the water. You know, it's uncomfortable, uh, you want to stay home. Uh, what are some of the things you can do to, to kind of ease the discomfort that you may be having? Uh, when you're at home and, and if, you're, if, if you're having uh, too much pain or inflammation in your eyes, I believe what, what you can do there is, uh, for example, what we mentioned earlier, the use of the artificial tears, okay. uh, cold or warm compressions. That's basically what you should be doing. There isn't much other that you can do other than just apply those cold compressions, relieve some of the pain and inflammation already present. Uh, as mentioned, it is viral, so it has to run its course as well, so you have to just give it time. And then um, yeah, just preventive, preventive measures that you should be doing. Are there any complications one can get from conjunctivitis? Uh, complications uh, for viral, it's not that uh, high, but if you do have the bacterial conjunctivitis, there are some complications that can that can happen. Okay. And then so. you have to take into consideration also that because you have the discomfort, people tend to rub their eyes right. and they're rubbing and yeah. then that just irritates it more and then sometimes you might damage other parts because of, right. of the rubbing and through the rubbing. You might introduce another bacteria another there mm -hmm. or something that would worsen the infection and then of course you, you could end up with some complications and then we have to mention in regards to babies, yes. they do yes. have um, I mean, the damage could be more, um, I think, with babies than with the adults. Okay. So yeah. you have to be careful with, with the smaller ones at yeah. home. Okay. Now, this, as I said earlier, this is a unique situation, but I want to ask a question. Sometimes there are identifiable flare-ups and, and usually things calm down after a while. You have your own predictions in place. Uh, if we are looking at this current outbreak, we're one <coughs> month in, just about. Um, what is the expectation from the Ministry of Health For when it as to what's the peak, when do we start to normalize, is, is there an indication? Um, it's, that's difficult to say, um, to make predictions based on uh, sort of normal situations, it's, well first of all predictions are never actually correct, right? <laughs> even, well, they're only even with the weather, they're just a guide. Guesses, yeah. right? Um, and to make a prediction with a normal situation is a lot easier than to make a prediction of what will happen with a very atypical situation yes. like this. Um, what comes to mind when you ask your question is some information was shared with us from the experience that another country had. Um, it took them several weeks, about six weeks to peak mm -hmm. and another um, four or five weeks to return to normal. So mm -hmm. their entire outbreak period was about 11 weeks. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that, you know, if, if people um, heed the public health message that we're putting out there, that our situation will calm down more quickly. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we're dealing with something that's <laughs> very, very, very contagious and people have to buy in to their, the role that they have to play mm -hmm. to bring this under control. Because as we've mentioned, there's, it's not like we can go out and start spraying like we do with dengue. People mm -hmm. need to, to do what they have to do to limit transmission. Mm -hmm. Can I just add something? Yes. I, I believe in, in when, when we're talking about all of this, I mean that there's a, the, the, the misconceptions that, that I've already uh, mentioned, but also there is a fear. I, I mean, there's yeah. so many individuals who are very afraid yeah. of, and scared of actually contracting a, Pink eye. Yeah. Pink? I mean, Same. <laughs> I live with a doctor and I tell her every day, please leave your illnesses at the hospital. Don't do, my sister, do not bring it home, please. Yeah. I'm very scared. So, uh, I mean, even the use of, 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 of sprays, like when you spray in a room before someone comes in, yeah. like you believe it, I mean, that's not gonna actually lessen yeah. the chances of, of getting uh, the transmission or actually uh, trying to avoid someone. I mean, uh, you, you walk in and there are individuals who say, okay, I don't want anything to do with you, don't come close to me or things like that. I mean, yeah. it, as long as you protect yourself, yeah. that's basically what, what will be the, the measures that you're gonna take to actually lessen yeah. get being infected, yeah. so. 
all of that is, is I mean, individuals are very scared of it, but um, if you do your part, yeah. chances yeah. are that it's very, very less mm. that you're going to get infected. And don't forget that you can get reinfected. I think yes. that is key yes. as well. Yes. How soon is so that? Can you get reinfected? As soon as? See, the viral and the bacterial, they're different uh, organisms okay. that are causing it. So there might be, we're not sure what is in circulation. So the chances of being reinfected is zero. So you might actually be going through one, and then by the time something else is around, and, and it, it, you might actually get reinfected with another strain of, of that yeah. virus too. So that can happen. <laughs> Well, that's just exciting to know. We are in the midst of the outbreak, and we really hope that people are paying attention to the messages yeah. that you shared. You know, like I mentioned earlier, we don't think of how often we wash our hands. And another one that I'm extremely guilty of is we don't think of how much we touch our face yes. during yeah, the day. That's true. Um, <laughs> and so it means controlling one behavior and increasing another. Um, and we really hope that those who have been infected will hear. We've said it over and over. Your responsibility is to not contribute towards the outbreak. You get a day off so you can stay home and not infect people. So stay home and don't infect people. All right. Um, anything else that you would, re of course, the medication issue. Um, I think it's, it's very important to reiterate what you said, uh, that if it is a viral infection, the drops, the medicated drops, will do no good. We have heard of increase in prices. Uh, mm -hmm. has, has the Ministry of Health done anything to check into that issue? I saw that. Uh, I think they have um, looked at that. At least I, I saw communication there. I'm not sure how far they are with that. It's not our yeah. unit that would look at that. But I know the ministry is aware mm -hmm. of that hike in prices that have has been happening. Mm -hmm. um, I must mention here, though, that uh, people might argue and say, but I do get some relief. Yes, some of these eye drops do have anti-inflammatory. So mm -hmm. what is working is the anti-inflammatory in it, not the antibiotic in it. Okay. So sometimes it comes with a combination of anti-inflammatory and um, some antibiotic uh, mm. in, in the... So when they use it, they might have some, some relief. But as I said, the inflammation itself, the coolness helps. So... Um, I mean, if you do not have the finances, again, we talk about yeah. impact. Yeah. And if your entire family, then they might be tempted to buy just one little bottle and just share it with everybody, causing cross-contamination mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, in the family. So um, it, it is a cost. And so just use, um, as I said, cool compresses if, if I mean, you, if you feel that mm -hmm. it is very... Um, the inflammation is, is really bothering you, then just apply some cool compress um, as it is. But the antibiotic in the, in the eye drops really are not doing much to, to speed up the healing process. Good to know. And you are looking at anywhere up to two weeks, from, one, from four days, you said, to two weeks that you may be, uh, that you need to allow the viral infection mm -hmm. to take its course, right? Any other message you'd like to share with the public at this time before we wrap up? I think if we were just focusing on, on the prevention. Yes. That, that's, that's key. Yeah. The prevention keys, the, the messages there and, and what you, the responsibility that you have. So mm -hmm. For employers out there, I just want to emphasize that it actually does no good for them to have someone at work with pink yeah. eye and then everyone else gets infected and this thing you know, 25%, 50% upwards of their staff have pink eye and need days off. It's yeah. actually counterproductive for them. Yeah. So, Better yeah. to have one out than multiple. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. We hope that uh, people have been paying attention and will uh, do their best, their own individual part, in protecting themselves and their own families. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a break and we're going to, when we come back, we're going to be joined by representatives of Oceana and designer Rebecca Sturm and they have a very interesting collaboration that you want to know more about. That's coming up after the break.